This writing lesson will help you construct extended response items or possibly even essays for any class, be that social studies, science, math, or English. Be sure to take notes while you watch this video. Feel free to pause it as you take those notes and think about your own writing because this lesson is designed to help you revise it, to improve it. Today we're talking about exemplification writing. Exemplification writing may sound like a fancy term, but it simply means providing examples of something. So the writing task today is to provide examples of a concept. You may need to define that concept. You may not. It may already be understood. But regardless, you have been tasked with providing examples of it. Let's take a look at a typical writing prompt. Describe three early examples of self-government in the British colonies and the people responsible for putting each of them into effect. You must always begin with the prompt to understand how you write. Let's take a look at a standard student answer to this prompt. There are three early examples of self-government that I will describe. One is town meetings, where town members could gather no matter what social status. Another is Fundamental Orders of Connecticut and was the first written constitution in North America. The last is the House of Burgesses was the first popularly elected legislature in the New World. These are all examples of self-government in the British colonies. The House of Burgesses were put into effect by higher class people elected by the people to serve in government. Some of these people were the Duke of York and Roger Williams. You may take a look at this paragraph and identify some spelling errors, some capitalization errors, or other small grammatical errors. But today we'll focus on something more substantial. We'll focus on the sentence structure, topic sentences, and everything else that might contribute to the clarity and flow of this paragraph. We'll start by looking at the topic sentence. This is the most important sentence and sets the flow and tone for your paragraph. This student has written, there are three early examples of self-government that I will describe. First of all, we notice that I is the first person voice and we want to avoid that. Be sure in a paragraph like this to avoid the first person voice unless the prompt specifically calls for you to talk about yourself. But let's review what topic sentences are supposed to do. A topic sentence should achieve two tasks. The first is to rephrase the prompt. And that means you will use language from the prompt itself in your topic sentence. The second is to add an answer. Sometimes this requires you to think, sometimes not. And we'll see, depending upon the prompt, how much thought you need to put into step two. Our prompt today, once again, is to describe three early examples of self-government in the British colonies and the people responsible for putting each of them into effect. We must think, what is this prompt about? What's the subject of it? What's the topic? What does my teacher want me to explore? And you can probably answer, self-government in the British colonies. This will help you achieve step one, rephrasing the prompt. And you can rephrase the prompt by asking yourself, what is the subject? Is the subject self-government or the British colonies? Is it self-government in the British colonies or is it British colonies and self-government? And you might think, well, self-government seems like it's more important. However, an acting subject, a noun that can do something, would lead to better sentences. So we shouldn't focus on self-government. We should focus on British colonies because the British colonies are organizations of people that can do something. If you select a subject that can do something, you are more likely to write better sentences. A sentence like this. The British colonies had self-government. This is a rephrasing of the prompt. So our first topic, our first task, is achieved. Rephrase the prompt. We've taken self-government in the British colonies and made it the British colonies had self-government. Step two is to add an answer. And in this prompt, your teacher has already given you that answer. It is three ways. So we write the topic sentence, the British colonies had self-government in several ways. We know that we are looking at three for this particular paragraph. This writer could have written the British colonies had self-government in three ways, but that indicates that there are only three ways. Remember, exemplification does not mean that we are talking about every possible example of the concept. So a better topic sentence is to say the British colonies had self-government in several ways. Regardless of where you're going, you must achieve the first two tasks rephrasing the prompt and adding an answer. Select a strong subject and add the answer. 
The British colonies had self-government in several ways. The student answer is improving already. We have rid ourselves of the first person voice and the sentence is clear and direct. Our next problem comes from these. These are the subjects of the sentences. The subjects mean the grammatical subjects, the important nouns of each sentence. And we have nouns like one, another, the last, these, the house of Burgesses, and some. Some of these subjects work, many do not. Let's try to understand the difference. Here's one of the sentences. One is town meetings where town members could gather no matter what social status. Remember what we're talking about with subjects. This is a weak subject. The word one is not clear. It doesn't help me understand what noun I'm talking about. But remember, when we talk about strong subjects, we want to look at something that can actually do something. In our topic sentence, we talked about British colonies. Keep going with that. Think about nouns of people or organizations that can do things. Our sentence becomes, the colonists attended town meetings where town members could gather no matter what social status. The sentence is stronger. One is not a strong subject, the colonists is. And you might notice another effect. Instead of the weak verb is, we now have the strong verb attended. And the colonists attended town meetings where town members could gather no matter what social status is a stronger sentence, a stronger voice. This is a strong subject and the benefit of it. Let's take a look at another sentence. Another is Fundamental Orders of Connecticut and was the first written constitution in North America. Another, once again, is a weak subject. Another doesn't really tell me what we're talking about. I will replace it with something that can act, a stronger subject. And I see the sentence, they followed the Fundamental Orders of Connecticut, which was the first written constitution in North America. They is a pronoun. You might not think that's a very strong subject, but it replaces the word colonists. So you can think that this actually says the colonists followed the fundamental orders of Connecticut. They, as a pronoun, is a strong subject if it replaces a strong noun previously. In this case, we still have a strong subject even though it may not seem so at first glance. Strong subjects can be pronouns as well as nouns. The student answer is improving already. The British colonies had self-government in several ways. The colonists attended town meetings where town members could gather no matter what social status. They followed the fundamental orders of Connecticut, which was the first written constitution in North America. We still need another piece to improve this answer, and that piece is the piece of transition words and phrases, what we might call transition languages. So we already took a look at how strong answers follow from strong topic sentences. And then they use strong subjects. Now we'll use strong transition words and phrases. Right now, the student's answer depends upon language like the first and another is and the last. The student has made a pretty typical mistake. That mistake is to make the noun of the, sub of the sentence, the subject of the sentence, the transition word. But we should separate those two. This may sound challenging, but it's not when you remember that transition words and phrases are easy. They are words and phrases like, for example, for instance, also, and as well. You might find others, but when you're talking about exemplification writing, you should look at phrases like, for example, and for instance. These are strong and clear transition language sets for exemplification writing, and they will still allow you to use strong subjects. If I insert these transitions, I can see the answer improve even more. The British colonies had self-government in several ways. For example, the colonists attended town meetings where town members could gather no matter what social status. Also, they followed the fundamental orders of Connecticut, which was the first written constitution in North America. Now each sentence is strong, and the transition words and phrases allow me to understand that I'm talking about examples. They also separate each sentence as a different example. The word also indicates that my next sentence is talking about a different example. This portion of the answer is much improved. The British colonies had self-government in several ways. For example, the colonists attended town meetings where town members could gather no matter what social status. Also, they followed the fundamental orders of Connecticut, which was the first written constitution in North America. They had this self-government as well with the House of Burgesses, the first popularly elected legislature in the New World. You can see that I inserted the phrase as well 
as another transition word or phrase. That one happened inside the sentence, where transition language can occur. But now, I included three sentences, each with a transition word or phrase and a strong subject. The strong topic sentence leads this paragraph. It is followed by strong subjects. And I've included transition language, for example, also and as well. Now my ideas are strongly presented and clearly linked through transition words and phrases. Let's review. The strength of exemplification writing on the paragraph level draws from a topic sentence that restates and answers the prompt. Then it uses strong subjects and sentences. It uses clear transition words. These three steps can help you improve an extended response paragraph. You can then use these principles to extend into a longer essay length composition. Following these three recommendations can help you improve a piece of writing and make it clearer.